This one is for the fathers and all the father figures, stepfathers, grandfathers, godfathers. Whether by blood or by choice, we give voice to our gratitude for the fathers, the heroes, the mentors and anchors, the coaches and counselors, teachers and trainers, the men who shape us and show us the definition of faithful and strong and wise, the fathers, always by our side, with us and for us, steady and courageous, ready to inspire and encourage and give us a word of wisdom, a voice of reason in season and out. There is no doubt where their strength comes from, what their hope is set on, who their eyes are fixed on, the fathers, the embodiment of legacy, humility, integrity, needed and necessary, dependable and trustworthy. The fathers, the men who lead and love and believe in us even when we don't. The fathers, the men who nurture and point us toward purpose, almost bigger than life, but always down to earth. The fathers, the men who give guidance, direction, and keep everything in perspective, making room for us to grow. We may never know the prayers, the tears, the sacrifices that fathers make on our behalf, yet still find time to play and laugh and rejoice in the day that the Lord has made. The fathers, the heroes, we honor you today. Good morning to all of you. Happy, yeah, and happy Father's Day. Um, if you're visiting us on the live stream, we're glad to have you as well. And we hope that today will be a special day for the fathers. Hope you do something nice for them. Um, yeah, and it's a, it's a great privilege to gather here and, and worship on this special day. So we're looking forward to it. As for announcements, um, so on Tuesday, we have our men's Bible study. So feel free to come out to that. On Thursday at 7, we have our prayer meeting as always. And then Friday, we have our youth night at 7, which will be our last youth night before heading off into the summer break. And then another key announcement is starting on the 30th, we will be moving our um, summer worship time to 10.30, so it'll be, uh, it'll be earlier. Um, and then we have VBS coming up on July 22 to 26, and there are registration forms in the foyer. And as for our paving project, we were pleased to see some money come in. We have $1,650 so far, so we're blessed to receive that and keep thinking about that as we yeah, continue giving. Um, that's all, that's about all the announcements that we have, so would you join me in a word of prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, thank you for waking us up all this morning, thank you for the gift of new life, thank you for Father's Lord, and that we get to gather here and, and uh, worship you and, uh, as you are our Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us with godly men who influence our lives, and thank you, um, because you are our perfect Heavenly Father who is so infinitely good, Lord God. And I pray for the service that it will just be lifting you up and that we will just gather here and praise you and just think about that. Um, and thank you for the privilege of gathering as brothers and sisters in Christ, united by your Son, where we get to sing praises to your almighty name. And I pray that you will use this entire service to accomplish your will and accomplish your glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I'd like to call the worship team up. Please stand and sing with us.
the ushers forward. Let's pray together. Dear Jesus, we thank you for this day that we can come together and worship you, and we thank you for um, just the, the lovely weather, even though it's, it's windy, we're thankful for this day. And we just pray as we take this offering, God, that you would help us to give um, out of a, a cheerful heart, God, giving back to you just a part of what you've uh, blessed us with. In your name, amen. some people might not think of as a traditional church song. It is a country song and it was, it, it, although it has biblical uh, lyrics, it, it is more towards fathers, how they should teach their sons through using the help of God correctly, sorry, so they can teach their sons correctly so that when their sons grow up and have children, that they can teach their sons. So please enjoy the words and listen carefully to Buy a Boy Baseball. Bye. Buy a boy baseball, get him outside. Get his hands dirty, take a little time Give a boy a Bible, teach him how to pray And thank the good Lord at the end of the day Wake him up early, teach him how to work Spend his own money, show him what it's worth, yeah He's gotta know it all, he'll slip and he'll fall He'll pick himself up, amen Yes, sir, yes, ma'am, show him how to be a man So one of these days he can Buy a girl flowers, take her to a show Treat her like a lady, maybe down the road You can give a girl a diamond, put it on her hand Watch her and her mama, making all the plans Buy a little house on a little piece of land Build a little family, so maybe one of these days he can Buy a boy a baseball, get him outside Make us so dirty, take a little time Give a boy a Bible, teach him how to pray And thank the good Lord at the end of the day Buy a boy a baseball Whenever he'll slip and he'll 
fall, he'll pick himself up, baby man. Yes, sir, yes, man, show him how to be a man, so one of these days he can buy a boy in baseball. Yeah, give a boy a Bible. He's watching you walking, he's hearing you talking, he wants to be you someday. He's growing up fast and you can't get it back right now, he just wants to play. So buy a boy baseball, get him outside, get his hands dirty, take a little time. You can give a boy a Bible, teach him how to pray, and thank the good Lord at the end of the day. Bye, boy. Happy Father's Day. Yeah, well, it's, it's always refreshing to be reminded of the sacrifices that our fathers have given us, and uh, it's always refreshing to think about like the very crucial role that all fathers play, being an example to us. And so, you know, I think for uh, for us here who have godly men in our lives, we should constantly be thankful. So, thank you for that, Brecken. Um, our scripture reading comes from Hebrews chapter 12, 1 to 11. Hebrews 12, 1 to 11. <clears throat> Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Um, Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself, so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. And in your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. And have you forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as sons? My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor be weary when reproved by him. For the Lord disciplines the one he loves and chastises every son whom he receives. It is for discipline that you have to endure. God is treating you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? If you are left without discipline in which all have participated, then you are, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. Besides this, we have had earthly fathers who have disciplined us and we respected them. Shall we not much more be subject to the father of spirits and live? For they disciplined us for a short time as it seemed best to them, but he disciplines us for our good that we may share his holiness. For the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant, but later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Would you join me in a word of prayer? Dear God, we thank you for this day. Thank you for uh, the gift of fathers, Lord. Thank you for the godly men who've, impo- who've impacted our lives in positive ways and raised, up, um, raised us up to fear you in, in the word, Lord God. Thank you for them, and I pray that we'll, we will constantly be thankful for the godly influence that they've um, blessed us with, um, knowing that who we are, has, um, it, it's greatly influenced by uh, the great impact of our fathers. Um, but we also think at this time that there are people here uh, who, for, for them, Father's Day is a day of sadness and a day of difficulty. Whether it be family issues or loss, you know the situation perfectly. We pray for them, Lord, that you will give them the comfort and the peace that they need as they go about this difficult day, Lord God. Um, and remind them that um, while there may be conflicts regarding their earthly father or loss, Um, If they have faith in Christ, then you are their Heavenly Father, Lord God. We thank you that you are our perfect Heavenly Father. Um, When we were once strangers to your family, we were once hostile to you, but through your Son, Jesus Christ, you've reconciled us, and now you've, you've adopted us into your family. 
where we can now call you Abba, Father. Thank you for the intimate relationship that we have with you, and I pray that we will constantly meditate on that and will constantly reflect on that, Lord God. Um, because in times of difficulty, in times of trials and struggles, that's what we need to know, that we have a loving Heavenly Father by our side. So I pray that we will constantly praise you for being our loving Heavenly Father. And I pray that we'll constantly just meditate on that, Lord. And I pray for the fathers and the men of our church today that you'll constantly bless them, Lord God, um, as they, as we just uh, heard in the song that about how you've given them a role where they are to be an example for the family. There's so many challenges that come with that and that places a lot of pressure on fathers because now when they, when they, uh, when they live, when they behave, they have to think of other people watching them and uh, their kids want to be like them. So Lord God, please remind all the fathers here today that their role is so important for the family. And we know Satan will, um, will attack them as they are the head of the household. And so I pray that you'll protect them, protect them spiritually from the attacks of the enemy. May they be rooted in your word. May they be rooted in prayer so that they will um, lead their families closer to you, Lord God. We continue to pray for Southern Brazil and the recovery efforts that, that continue to happen there. Thank you that you know the situation perfectly and as we are grieved by seeing the effect of sin in our world, we thank you that at the end of the day, you are sovereign and you are in control and you're all powerful, Lord God. And, um, if, if you desire that, that a Brazil fully recovers even at this instant, you have the power to do that. So we thank you that we serve a God like you and so we continually pray for them and use this as a time where you can glorify yourself. Um, and we keep praying for the conflicts that go about in our world. Uh, we pray for the war that continues to happen. Lord God, we, we ask that um, you'll, you will deal with them uh, and that the war will ultimately cease. Again, we know that's just a natural effect of sin and living in a broken world full of broken, um, depraved sinners. But again, you are still sovereign over them, Lord. There's nothing that's outside of your control. And, um, and if you desire peace to happen at this very instant, you have the power to make that happen. So may we never lose faith in that. May we constantly pray for peace. But at the end of the day, remember that through war or through peace, somehow, some way, you will use it to glorify your name. So we thank you for that, Lord. Uh, we pray for those in our church family who are currently facing health challenges, um, whether major or minor. We, we, we pray for them. Um, we, we grieve at just seeing how sin truly affects people. Um, and we see how it affects our loved ones, too, as we, as we, th as we see them suffer physically. And I, I pray that you will heal them, Lord God. You are the great physician, and you have the power to heal any sort of sickness, Lord God. And as we read your word, we see that you have the power to cast it out immediately. And if you desire to do that today, we know that you have the power to do that. So, Lord God, we pray for those facing health challenges. Um, you know, if, if it so happens that it's life-threatening, um, may they place their faith in you. And if they have already, comfort them in the hope of eternal life, knowing that when they pass away, it's, it's not really death, but it's just going back home, Lord God. So I pray for them. Uh, we pray for our ministry church of the week, Nicole Miss Baptist. We pray for Pastor Rick and Lynn. Thank you for the ministry that they have, and I pray that they'll um, continue to further your kingdom. Thank you for the blessing that you've been giving them in their children's church program, and please continue to bless them in that way. Um, we pray that the five-day club that they will they will be hosting will be a blessing for the kids who will all come. So pray, we just pray for that church as a whole, and we pray that you will continually use them for your glory and to advance the gospel to everybody around them. We pray for Missionary of the Week, Jeff and Sonia Kilmerton. Uh, we just want to pray for Pastor Brian as he comes up and preaches. May you give him the wisdom and the guidance that he needs to be a faithful preacher of your word, and may we, the church, be open to hear what you have to tell us in your word this morning. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Sing that, <clears throat> sing that song, uh, Under His Wings. It's number 356, if you'd like the, the music.
356. Children's Church as we sing stanza three. to see all of you here today. You're having a good day today? Yeah, you are. You're getting older, some of you guys. So today is Father's Day. Did you give your dad extra hugs today and kisses? Yeah. Oh, maybe, don't say, did you give it to him yet? No. <laughs> don't want to give, it's safe. <laughs> You're safe. You can speak up, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice that we can get things for our parents, for our dads on this Father's Day. And uh, that song was talking under his wings and that, that, that image of protection, how God uh, comes along and uh, protects us. And our parents, our dads do protecting for us too, right? They help us and keep us safe and provide different things that we can enjoy. And so that's a, a good thing. Uh, but our earthly fathers, do your earthly fathers ever make mistakes? Uh, sometimes they do, right? I know I'm a dad and I don't do everything perfectly. And sometimes you think, oh, I should have done that differently. Or maybe I could have said that a different way. Or sometimes um, parents, we can get upset or something. And sometimes we have to ask our kids for forgiveness. And that's okay, right? And uh, we need to do that and be honest about that. And the God is the perfect Heavenly Father, right? He does everything perfect and he protects us in a perfect way and provides for us and it's a blessing to have him. But the, one of the ways that he does that is through providing earthly parents for us as well and to serve and to care for us. And so we need to thank our Heavenly Father for providing our earthly parents for us, right? Let's do that now. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you for your provision and protection. We thank you for all that you have done for us in Christ, and, and we thank you for our earthly parents, for our dads, and uh, special men in our lives that you've used to influence us and protect us and provide for us, to nurture us. And uh, Lord, we're thankful uh, that you are a, a forgiving God and a God who helps us in some of those roles where we struggle at times and need your extra help. Thank you that you are our perfect, loving Heavenly Father. And uh, Lord, you, you love us, you, you shield us in ways that we don't even realize a lot of the times. But Lord, on this day, we want to honor uh, you ultimately. You are the one we want to lift up and glorify. And we do thank you, though, for how you provide uh, those earthly parents, those fathers, who do make a difference in so many significant ways. May you bless these children. May you continue to go before them. Bless their time as they have opportunities to learn and grow in you and us as we look in your word as well. We commit this time now into your care. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we'll see you later. Have a great day. Have fun with your, your dads later. Well, on this uh, Father's Day, we're going to uh, take another detour uh, away from First John as we did on Mother's Day. Uh, some of these special days are not always easy to deal with from a church perspective because we all have different experiences and backgrounds uh, that we bring to these kind of days. And while some people may be in celebration mode, such as a new dad who is fresh to Father's Day, uh, becoming a father for the first time, that's an exciting thing. So congratulations to those who are in that uh, kind of role today. Uh, while for others, there may be some uh, sadness, even some pain or a lot of pain due to family backgrounds where a dad was not that ideal model father or may not even have been present in any meaningful way in their children's lives. Uh, for myself, this is a bit of a strange Father's Day, uh, being the first time in my life that I don't, uh, won't be connecting with my father through a phone call or sending a card uh, now that he's uh, passed away. Uh, he also had a June birthday, so often I would purchase a birthday card and a Father's Day card at the same time in anticipation of those dates uh, coming up. As our years uh, progress, we begin to accumulate uh, more and more family, friends, uh, acquaintances even, who are no longer with us. And many of these people who have had an impact upon our lives and who we would love to, to just visit with once more if we had the opportunity. On Father's Day, we especially think about fathers, uh, grandfathers, maybe even a great-grandfather or uncle or perhaps a God-fearing man in our church of our childhood who had an impact upon us. How good it would be to hear their voice, to, to take in their wisdom, to have an encouraging conversation with them. Thankfully for those men who had a personal relationship with Christ, there is that possibility of seeing them once more in heaven one day. And, and that's true if we ourselves have followed their example of faith. Uh, the writer to the Hebrews encourages us to do just that in Hebrews uh, chapter 12. It's a message not only fitting uh, for fathers to embrace, uh, but really all of us, and more specifically because while not of all of us may be fathers, all of us are children. And our text gets into that demographic as the author's thoughts progress. Uh, but first, I want to focus the first few verses of our text towards uh, the fathers and the men gathered here today. Uh, the first point the, being that uh, you're not alone. Uh, research tends to reflect that men tend to have fewer social contacts and friendships than do women, uh, even fewer close friends. Uh, this can lead to feelings of isolation and reduced sense of well-being. 
the thought that you have to struggle on through life on your own uh, strength, kind of, and, and, and macho through situations has played on more than one man's mental health. We find this relationship difference uh, play out in many churches where it seems easier to get ladies' groups together uh, than it is to establish and sustain a men's group. And there are, of course, many factors that contribute to all of this. Uh, The author to the Hebrews, though, reminds us men that we're not alone. Uh, We are, in fact, part of something much larger than ourselves. We have a whole stadium cheering us on. Hebrews 12.1 begins, uh, Therefore... Since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. Well, who are these witnesses? Uh, Therefore points us back to chapter 11, that great chapter that lists off the heroes of the faith. Uh, Really, they were imperfect, uh, flawed people, but ones who stood out as putting their faith in God and in exercising their faith. Uh, The list of examples starts off uh, with Abel, then Enoch, Noah, Abraham, continues on to many others, including such as Samuel, David, many others, of course, could be added to the list. And then comes this uh, curious observation. These were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised God had planned something better for us so that only together with us would they be made perfect. There was still more to come to complete God's plan. When we come to chapter 12, the the imagery laid out is that of a a foot race and uh, You know, the tracks going down the middle and with the stands on either side full of these, this cloud of witnesses, the faithful who have gone on before us. And and they're present there uh, cheering on the current faithful. If you've ever been present in a stadium for a major final of a sporting event, you kind of have a sense of what's going on here. People are cheering. You know, it's very loud. It's full of life. Uh, There's no feeling of being alone. Uh, The players are all aware that their fans are there present to cheer them on to victory. Victory will only come if some actions, though, take place. Uh, The whole text of verse 1 says, uh, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. The first action is to uh, throw off, uh, throw off everything that hinders, and secondly, the sin that entangles. Uh, If you watch this summer's uh, Olympics, you won't find athletes running, wearing a lot of extra clothes or uh, dragging stuff along behind them. You know, they might wear a warm-up jacket, but that's going to be cast aside before the race begins. Uh, Sometimes in our lives, we might get involved in pursuits and interests uh, that in and of themselves are not wrong, Uh, But they could have a way of taking away from the race that God wants us to run. Uh, It could be a man who has a hobby or some leisure pursuit that would be okay if it would not have become almost an obsession uh, that begins to push away other involvements and responsibilities uh, off to the side, uh, such as family commitments or the ability to serve in some capacity in Christ's church. Men, is your race being hindered in some way? A second idea is that of sin. Uh, you, you know, it's, it's been a few years now, but I'm still kind of in shock about one of our uh, NAB missionaries who had many, many years of faithful service, and then he left his wife for another woman. And it, you know, it's, it's just so sad, right? And, and you grieve in your heart for this uh, man's ex-wife and his children, and now grandchildren. And while women have done similar things, it seems like more men are guilty of such sin. 
And of course, there are many other sins that entangle, have the potential to disqualify us from the race. Uh, So we need to keep short accounts with sin to flee from the temptations placed before us. The second action is to run with perseverance. Uh, The perseverance in view here also carries the idea of endurance. Uh, The Christian race is not a short sprint. It's more of a marathon. Uh, We need to pace ourselves. We need training. We need to keep on pressing on, right? Our pursuit is not one of a leisurely stroll through life. Someone has said that every morning in Africa, a gazelle wakes up. It knows that it must run faster than the fastest line or it will be killed. Every morning a lion wakes up. It knows that it must outrun the slowest gazelle or it will starve to death. It doesn't matter whether you are a lion or a gazelle. When the sun comes up, you better be running. <laughs> First Peter 5 verse 8 says... Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Let's not be the one to be devoured. Let's keep pressing on, following the path that God has laid out for us. And we'll be able to do this only as we employ uh, the third action, Fix your eyes on Jesus. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Verse 2, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scoring its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. We're not going to have a good run if we take our focus off of Jesus. And while the heroes of the faith are are worthy examples, uh, they're not the ultimate examples and the one who completes our faith. Christ brings into focus what the others merely foreshadowed. He endured the cross that was anything but joyful because he saw ahead to the joy that would be possible only via the cross. In victory, he now enjoys the place of honor in the Father's presence. When we fix our eyes on Jesus, we take in all that he went through and we're amazed and humbled. While at the same time being encouraged. Uh, You know, think about what Christ went through. You know, and suddenly our trials don't seem so large. Verse three, consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Sometimes in our race through life, we, we do get tired, get discouraged. But have you noticed how that increases when our focus becomes more about ourselves uh, than in looking to Jesus. Men, have you taken your eyes off of Jesus lately? Verse 4 points out that any of the hardships uh, they have faced has not led them yet to the point of dying for their faith. Uh, I think that's a good reminder that we, you know, we still enjoy, uh, you know, some some of the freedoms that we have, right? To, To worship together that other believers around the world don't have. Now our faith could very well be tested much more in the future. Uh, Would we be ready for that? This thought about suffering leads the author of Hebrews to remind his readers that suffering and sonship go together. Uh, The Hebrews needed a, a reminder to keep on running the race Uh, but also to be able to process some of the opposition and and challenges that they may face along the way. Uh, Such hardships would come by virtue of who they now were in Christ. Uh, They, like us, need to remember that we are God's sons. God's sons, verse 5 and 6 
And you have forgotten that word of encouragement that addresses you as sons. My son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline and do not lose heart when he rebukes you because the Lord disciplines those he loves and he punishes everyone he accepts as a son. A uh, quotation here from the book of Proverbs, Proverbs 3, 11 and 12. Uh, here there's no need to adjust the, the gender. You know, a lot of bi uh, modern Bible translations tend to use inclusive uh, language. Uh, so when a son is used, that gets changed to children or to sons and daughters. And sometimes that's okay, but other times not really a good translation. If you cross-reference, uh, you know, a lot of translations, uh, this is one place where the Greek text has not been altered to inclusive language. Uh, one exception being the New Living Translation of uh, some of those that I looked at. Uh, even the updated NIV, which usually adjusts the genders, uh, keeps son in this case, and rightly so, I believe. Uh, why do I say that? Because in the ancient world, there was a major difference between sons and daughters. More even, you know, than, than our modern, especially North American mindset. And it's important to note that, you know, Christianity really lifted up the status and the rights of women considerably from what they were in the first century and continues to do so if we have proper theology. At the same time, in the Roman world, uh, you know, a son had rights of inheritance and privileges that a daughter did not have. Uh, so when the writer reminds the Hebrews that they are addressed and treated as sons, he's including males and females at the same time in lifting all followers of Christ up to this, this high status, no less than a full son of God. You know, a Roman father had absolute authority over his children. Uh, when a child was born, he could decide to keep or to discard that infant. Uh, throughout the child's life, uh, the father decided what punishment or disciplines might be required. Uh, the father even had the power to execute his son, though that was thankfully uh, not a common practice. The discipline of children was the expected practice of what was involved in bringing up the next generation. When there was misbehavior or rebellion or lack of respect, you know, steps would be taken to deal with it. Uh, modern permissive parenting styles where the child is in charge would not have gone it over at all <laughs> in the first century. Uh, and while often people view suffering or discipline in a negative way, in, in the Christian arena, such things take on a more positive twist. In fact, God's discipline reflects love and acceptance. Our text says the Lord disciplines those he loves. Uh, you know, there are times when we get out of line. Uh, we need a course correction. If God did not care about us, he just let us continue on our merry way. But his love for us causes him to act. Uh, why did our earthly fathers discipline us? Well, hopefully it was because they loved us and they were concerned about our behavior and how we would turn out one day. And of course, human fathers don't always get it right, unlike God. Uh, God's discipline is also a sign of his acceptance. Uh, over in 1 John, we have looked at those who are a child of God versus those who are not and as such are of another family that's all about evil. Uh, there are times when the consequences of our sin make life harder than it needed to be. But at the same time, on the other side of the discipline, we often come out more refined and, and hopefully more in step with our Lord. Verse seven says, endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as sons. For what son is not disciplined by his father? God has lessons uh, to teach us. Uh, verse 8 uh, continues. 
if you are not disciplined and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are illegitimate children and not true sons. Children must learn that life involves uh, discipline. Uh, The word illegitimate was a word used of one born of a slave or of a concubine. They would not uh, have been considered to be a full heir, a full member of the family. A father may not feel the responsibility to train such a child well. And so some of these children, they had freedom from discipline. And yet that was far from being a good thing. Uh, It simply really revealed their lack of standing as a son. Uh, Verse 9 brings out a truth that we might not see or appreciate in the moment, uh, but often comes later in our lives when we start to appreciate some of the guidelines, the boundaries, uh, corrections that we received that help to shape us into better individuals. Uh, Verse 9 Moreover, we have all had human fathers who disciplined us and we respected them for it. How much more should we submit to the father of our spirits and live? God's not out uh, to get us. Uh, He's all about helping us to be shaped and, and refined more into the image of his son. It's always best to submit to our Heavenly Father's will for us. Our childhood discipline uh, lasts for a relatively uh, short period of time, but God's discipline continues throughout our lives and is much needed and very beneficial. Uh, Verse 10 and 11 conclude, our fathers disciplined us for a little while as they thought best, but God disciplines us for our good that we may share in his holiness. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. As long as we have the breath of life, we need to keep on running the race that's set before us. Uh, Remember that, you know, we're not alone alone in this journey. Uh, There's a host of others who have gone on before us. Let's cast aside the things that are not helpful and run with perseverance, always keeping Jesus in view. Regardless of our roles, you know, a father, a mother, a child, if we are in Christ, we're God's son. Uh, With sonship comes rights, but also responsibilities. But not everyone will be pleased that we are God's child. Hardships, trials, tests, uh, corrections will come. But keep in mind that they also reveal a heavenly father who both loves and accepts us as one of his own. May the Lord find us to be his faithful sons. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the encouragement of your word, and uh, we think about the host of of people who have gone on before us uh, today. We think about some of the godly men who have impacted our lives. Uh, Some may have been fathers or grandfathers, but some were not. Some were just... uh, Christian friends, godly men who discipled us, who took the time to uh, talk to us, to correct us, to guide us, to encourage us. Lord, how we thank you for those examples. But Lord, most of all, we thank you for what you have done for us in Christ, that we don't have to be off by ourselves, but as we put our faith in the Lord Jesus, you bring us right into your family, fully accepted with all the rights and privileges of inheritance, but also though that responsibility to to live our lives in a way that would bring honor and glory to our heavenly Father. 
May we have the desire to do that even in increasing measure as long as you give us the breath of life and have that race set out before us. May we be your faithful followers, your faithful children, I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Invite the worship team to come once more. Please stand and sing with us.
Amen. How amazing to know that we have a Heavenly Father who, who loves us. And I hope that that's your experience, that you have that, that you know him as your father today. And uh, if you don't know, we'd love to talk with you and pray with you about how you can make that uh, reality. Thank you for worshiping uh, here today, today with us. And uh, hopefully you have a very blessed day, Father's Day, and however that gets processed for you today. Uh, but I most of all would pray that uh, you just sense God's love and his care in your life. You are loved. You are special because of our Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord, for this time together and that we can lift up our Heavenly Father, that we can lift up the Lord Jesus who makes our relationship possible, who solidifies that to a relationship that can't be taken away. Thank you for the things that you're preparing for us. And thank you that you will be with us as we go into this new week, whatever may come up. There probably will be temptations, there will be challenges. But thank you, thank you that you'll be there with us, helping us to keep on running, to keep on serving, to keep on being faithful to you. May you go before us as we go from here now to live and to serve. In Jesus' name, amen.